welcome to the Creative Visionaries podcast. My name is Tori Barker, a digital marketing specialist, business owner, mom, and you guessed it, a creative visionary. This podcast is about inspiring business owners, building connections, sharing success stories, and motivating others. Join me on this journey as we tap into your true potential and unleash your inner visionary. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Creative Visionaries podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I have the pleasure of introducing you to our guest, Chris Miles. Chris is the Blogger Evolution podcast host, where he helps aspiring bloggers, affiliate marketers achieve financial independence with an online business. Chris, welcome to the show. Hey, Tori. Thanks so much for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Super excited. This just should be fun. So let's, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, tell us how you got to uh, got to this point in your life and becoming the Blogger Evolution podcast host. Yeah, so um, I'm a. Uh, it was in the very beginning. It was just me and my wife, and um, we had these you know regular jobs or what I like to call just over broke type jobs <laughs> where we could do you know we were doing fine you know kind of kind of waiting you know just just kind of just barely staying above the surface and we were doing okay you know we were able to do this here do that there take a trip here but it wasn't anything like ridiculous so um I, i've always been the type of a person who always wanted to start some type of business entrepreneur even since i was like a teenager and um i always had something going on very few of them actually did anything um like well to the point to where I would just continue doing it and it blew up to this big business. So I got to the point to where we found out that we were pregnant with our first son and his name's Benji. And when he, uh, when we found out that that was happening, uh, my wife expressed to me that she wanted to quit her job. So I remember thinking like, uh, we can't afford that, <laughs> you know, like not even close. <laughs> so um, she basically sat me down and said, hey, you need to figure this out. So I was like, oh, okay. So I had to kind of put on my big boy pants as fast as I could. <laughs> and um, so I I went online, did what a lot of people do, Googled how to make money online. And, you know, God knows what pops up when that kind of stuff happens. And what I ended up doing was trying a whole bunch of stuff that just didn't work, but I did eventually settle on blogging and affiliate marketing. This was back in like 2016, by the way. and um, I've settled on that. It's It was tough. Don't get me wrong, but I did eventually figure it out. And it got to the point now to where I started building up blogs, buying and selling blogs, doing website investing, that kind of thing. And here we are about, what, six, seven years later. And this is what we do full time, you know, and it's, awesome. it's been a really fun ride. So uh, just recently, over the last two or three years, I've maybe been helping other people do something similar. And um, that's kind of how the podcast ended up getting started. So did you ever think that you would, would settle on blogging? Were you in a, a writing major? Did you enjoy writing or how did how did that turn out? Yeah, interestingly enough, when, when it comes to like what I did in college, uh, I started in engineering and realized that it was too much work. I, like, <laughs> I, did, I didn't enjoy it enough. It was... Uh, it was one of those things where up and through high school, I didn't have to study much. I normally picked up stuff pretty quickly. When I got to college, I had to start studying and I didn't <laughs> like that. So uh, I, I kind of, you know, pushed my way through it and got to the point to where, you know, what, I don't want to do engineering. I remember going to the uh, to one of the, um, the people in the office and saying, hey, I, I don't know where my credits can go. Just put me in a degree audit that will work so that I can get out of here. <laughs> and uh, I ended up falling onto uh, communications and um, some uh, IT work a little bit um, as like a secondary, kind of what they called ISDS, information systems and decision sciences. But um, I ended up with that. So communications is kind of where I ended up with. And a lot of people who do communications ends up in, you know, uh, working at a newsroom or, you know, working yeah, somewhere media. like that. Yeah. In some type of media. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, instead of doing that, I ended up getting a job like at a bank. So I was doing absolutely nothing <laughs> with that. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's the joy of college <laughs> for the most right. part. So um, going through that whole process, uh, I eventually got to the point where I realized, you know, I was an OK communicator. You know, I can tell a story. I can have a conversation with somebody. And I started a YouTube channel, started uh, the podcast. And now I'm using that those same skills that I did learn through college, but using them for myself rather than just using them for uh you know, for someone else, basically. Right. A company that you work for. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so let's dive into blogging and why you settled on um, this uh, as a business strategy and why blogging is so important. So my audience is a lot of entrepreneurs and then there's also some business owners. Um, mm -hmm. And so let's talk about the business side of things. So if you're a company and you own a business, 
why should you have a blog and why is that so, so important to the overall business and marketing strategy of a company? Yeah, that is super important. And I got a lot of thoughts on that. So if I ramble on, please let me know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when it comes to that, um, there are around, what, seven and a half or so billion people on planet Earth, right? Of those seven and a half billion, Google has about three and a half billion active users per month. That's a lot of people. It's billion with a B, right? So that's a huge, huge audience. I mean, think of there's not very few people who don't use Google, right? So it's become its own verb. You know, people yes. say, oh, you have a problem? Oh, just go Google it, right? Yeah. You don't you don't say go Bing it. You don't say go Yahoo it. You <laughs> say go uh, ask Jeeves it. You say go Google it because it just becomes, that's it's become its own phrase. Yeah. So because of that, chances are, I would say with 90, 95% accuracy, your audience uses Google at some point. And yeah. because of that, if you're on Google, typically you are able to create a passive nature and new leads coming into your business. Yeah. It is a slow burn. It's not something that you're going to turn on today and by next month, you're getting a thousand new leads a day or something like that. Right. But when you first get started on it and it's something that you kind of keep in the background and just churn at it and just churn at it. And while you're doing it, eventually you'll start to see getting a, a few leads coming in per day, then all of a sudden a whole bunch of leads coming in per day, all of a sudden it's probably going to be a little more than you can even handle per day yeah. uh, if you stick with it long enough. But it's a great thing for a business to do um, in order to get started. And it's leads you don't have to pay for as, as well. You sure. do pay for it with maybe the content and maybe if you're hiring someone to, to build your blog for you, you got to pay for it that way. But the ROI that you get with content online that you create with um, with a blog is much higher. Like, like tens of, of 10x times much higher than what you would do on Facebook ads or Instagram ads or, or YouTube or something like that in terms of um spending money on ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what I always tell my clients on my on my business side outside of the podcast, the digital marketing side of my business, I always tell my clients that, you know, think about your website as it's kind of like a, a digital um, brochure, right? So you put your content exactly. on there. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've got your pictures, your about section, your services, and that all pretty much stays the same. And so when you put your your website on, uh, you know, you know, make it live and whatever on Google, and then uh, you optimize the SEO, it pretty much stays the same. And unless, you know, people are searching for that specific uh, service that you offer, or, you know, looking for your business specifically, the content on your website doesn't change. And, and what, correct me if I'm wrong, but Google usually likes to see new content on websites. And so a way that I always encourage my uh, clients to optimize their website is by putting a blog on there because it's original content and it's new content that's always being added to the site with these specific keywords and these you know seo optimized uh content so am i on the right track or tell me what your thoughts are on that yeah 100 percent um i like the, the the wording you use there as a brochure or a magazine um because it's almost become like a calling card right if so you walk up to someone and you tell them about your business usually one of the first questions they ask you, oh, okay, well, what's your website? Or they have a QR code, take a picture of the QR code and go to my website or something like that. And that's where your, that's where you live, your business lives and can collect leads from whatever source that you're trying to get them from. I like Google, but that's just me. But um, being able to get that traffic from, uh, uh, to your, I'm sorry, to your website, it's, it's huge because it's a great way to just get uh, organic leads and you don't have to really work too much for them, especially once it, it picks up and it's just rolling on its own. Have you looked at your business expenses recently, specifically credit card processing fees? Do you understand what all of those fees are? As we get closer to 2023, now is a great time for businesses in every industry to take stock of their expenses. PolyPay is a payment processing services provider working with customers all over the U.S. and in various industries. A 15-minute conversation can put your business on the path to saving money with the customer support you deserve. Learn more about the benefits of PolyPay by visiting creativemarketingaffiliate.com. And so do you also, would, would you also agree that uh, blogging helps to position you in uh, authority in whatever business or niche or um, company that you run? Is blogging a good authority builder? 
Yeah, well, it comes across kind of similar to a book, especially if you have a blog on there, right? Because if someone walks up and say, hey, you know, um, here's a copy of my book. Like, oh, that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. Um, actually, there's a story. There's a I forgot what the guy's name was. Maybe it was Dan Locke or somebody. And he said that uh, he was on a, a an airplane and someone was sitting next to him. And instead of giving him his card, he gave him a copy of his book. And he said that, that was super impressive and it ended up leading to like some ten thousand dollar client or something like that. But uh, just the fact that you have a book makes you gives you a little bit more you know, legitimacy. He's like, oh, okay, this person knows what he's doing. He's an expert yeah. in this field. Blogging can do the exact same thing because the same things you will put in your book is probably the same things you'd want to put on your blog because that's what people are looking for and looking for answers to. And that's really what Google is all about is supplying answers to people's questions. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's kind of transition or switch over to the entrepreneurial side. So if you're not a company, you don't have a business, but you're, you know, either an entrepreneur, solopreneur, or getting into that uh, business, how can uh, a blog help you? Um, and then should you start with a blog? Should you start with a YouTube channel or a podcast? Which one should come first? Oh, uh, wow. Tori, that's, that's a loaded question right there. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. So uh, if you're going to this from, let me take the first part of your question. If you're going with this from the uh, uh, entrepreneurial, trying to build up a passive income side of things, then it's a great, it's one of the lowest ways to create uh, content in terms of cost, right? So you only need a domain, which costs normally what, eight to $12 a year, you know, that you can get. And then hosting, you can normally get for five, $6 a month. You know, it's, it's not super expensive to be able to start a blog. So it's a low, very low barrier to entry and anyone can do it, um, but not many people stick with it. Um, one thing that I've learned with uh, people that I've coached and, and clients of mine is, you know, people will, you know, that first month they get started, they're super excited. They're like, oh, this is amazing. Let's just keep doing this. I'm working towards my goals. The second month, it kind of wanes a little bit. Third month, they're like, okay, I'm doing all this work and I'm not getting anything. The fourth month, they give up. And I, f I find that across many industries is around that fourth month is usually when people are like, OK, I'm, I'm done with this if yeah. they're not getting the immediate return. But usually, especially with blogging, around four months is when things start picking up, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there's this old picture that, you know, where this guy has a, a pickaxe and he's underground and he's. Uh, going after it and he's he gives up and he walks away and he puts the pickaxe on his shoulder and he walks away but in the picture under him is a guy who just keeps going and the um gold was like five feet further if he yeah. had just gone a little bit longer he would have ran into it and that's very similar to how blogging works you have to stick with it just a little bit longer and by doing so I know it's easy to say because you might say, well, if I never give up on it, then, of course, it'll, it'll be successful at some point. Right. But you just got to keep going with it, keep going with it. And then it's going to uh, eventually give you some some dividends, because as long as you're creating content that's helpful for people online, it's going to work. Yeah. So I forgot your second question. What was it? <laughs> Oh, so, well, first, I, I that made me think of a phrase that I always use, which is don't quit before the magic happens. Ah, yeah. No, that's a great quote. I like that. Um, one <laughs> so, of my favorite okay. quotes is uh, do something now that your future self will thank you for. Oh, I and, love that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a cool one. You know, I heard it somewhere. I, I unfortunately cannot give credit to the person who came up with it, but that's the best that I can do. Um, it's really a pretty good, it's a pretty good quote because I'd rather start something now and then a year later be like, man, I'm glad I did that. And even if it wasn't successful, you know, I can at least look at it and say, well, at least I tried and gave right. it a shot, you know. So, okay. So part two of that question was, should you start with a blog, a YouTube channel or a podcast? Which one comes first? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You, you did ask that, didn't you? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So um, that's a loaded question because there are three outstanding mediums to get started with, with getting content out there to the masses so that you can start building your brand and driving more traffic to your business. Um, but there is a few things that I, I have about, you know, each one of those platforms. So as great as YouTube is, if you want to grow fast, YouTube is probably the best place that you should go. But the thing is, when your channel is going to be YouTube.com slash whatever your channel is. So if YouTube ever has an issue with you, if anyone ever has a, a weird issue with you, they can turn off your channel. 
it's rare. It probably won't happen, at least not anytime soon, but there's still the possibility of that happening, right? Um, podcasting is great, but discoverability is a thing. You do have to continue to promote it, show up on other people's podcasts, give away lead magnets, all of that fun stuff in order to try to grow your podcast. But podcasting is one of the greatest mediums in terms of getting a one-on-one -on -one with people because you're in someone's ear for 30, 45 minutes while they're working out or walking or something like that. So yeah. it's a great platform as well. Now, with all three of those platforms, the one that I like the most has got to be a blog because a blog is your website. No one can take that from you. It's you buy it, you own it, it's yours. So because of that, I would use the other platforms like podcasting and YouTube to send traffic to your blog so that you can have the opportunity to uh, capture email addresses, get some type of information so that you right. can remarket to people or something like that. There's a lot of people out there who are wanting to be a YouTuber, right? And that's fine and well. And I know a lot of YouTubers who are making a ton of money, but I know a lot of YouTubers who have huge audiences and aren't making any money. <laughs> and a big reason for that is because they just don't know how to monetize it well and how to uh, drive traffic to their own platforms right. so that they can uh, uh, then have full control 100% over what's going on with that audience. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk about, um, I don't know if this is an obvious question, but I keep thinking about what are those roadblocks, right? You say, start a blog, you need to do a blog. But in my head, I can hear clients saying, well, I don't know how to write. I can't, I don't write well, or what do I write about? How do you help or how do you coach people to uh, get over those roadblocks or those, those barriers to actually put this content together and, and produce a blog? Yeah, that's actually a great question because a lot of people do believe that, that oh, I'm not a good writer or I don't know how to write or something of that nature. And that's perfectly OK. A lot of us, you know, we don't necessarily always think the the most of ourselves. We, You know, most of us are pretty humble people, you know, but there's some people who are a little out there. But <laughs> for the most part, you know, we're pretty humble people. And I don't want to do that. And I, I've never done it before or yada, yada, yada. That, that That's understandable. But the beauty is the way Google works is that they reward you for helping people. Mm -hmm. So as long as you can help someone more than the next person, just mm -hmm. going a little bit out of your comfort zone to help somebody, then you're going to end up ranking better on Google just because you decided to do more of the research. So just mm -hmm. to give you a quick example, if um, I was writing a blog, let's say I had a golf blog and I was writing on and I had maybe a golf course or something that I'm trying to add and get more traffic to it. Um, maybe I want to say uh, how many golf balls does a golf course use in a single day, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I can, you know, I would go ahead and create that article. And when I'm creating that article, I can just, you know, maybe guess, guesstimate. Maybe I can go to the golf range, which would be pretty good, right? I go to the golf range and then maybe count how many golfers I see and yada, yada. But that'll probably work pretty well. Or maybe I can just get on the phone, call 10 or 12 golf courses around. Hey, how many golf balls do you guys run through in a, in a single day or something yeah. like that? I can add that information into my blog post and make it super unique to where no one else on the Internet really has that information, which then right. makes me unique. So okay. someone lands on that page and they see it and uh, they land and they stay there for a long time. Google sees those signals that people are um, enjoying the content that's on the site, which means they're going to reward me with more traffic just because I went a little bit out of my comfort zone to do something that somebody else wasn't willing to do. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Now, is there um, a certain length of a blog that performs better? Like 400 words, 700 words, a thousand words. What do you, what do you find is the most, um, uh, the, the best performing blog? Yeah. So in terms of length, I'm going to give you an answer that most people don't like. It needs to be as long as it needs to be. All right. <laughs> and you know, You're dodging of, the question. No, just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, most people will tell you like, oh yeah, it needs to be a thousand words. It needs to be right. 500 words. It needs to be 2000 words. Well, what how much do you need to put in the article for it to be helpful and and succinct as well right. don't just if ramble. you see out there and don't yeah don't ramble on like i've been doing don't ramble, don't ramble <laughs> on and take uh you know five thousand words i mean how many people google on their phones and then will sit down and write a list or read i should say a five thousand word post that's yeah. not going to happen you know oh sorry phone up <laughs> yeah so um it's not going to happen so 
with the amount of time that people have nowadays, they really want a nice, quick and succinct answer to their question. So if it takes you 500 words to do that, great. If it takes you a thousand words to do that, you know, go ahead and do that as long as the yeah. information is good and to the point. Now, I've gotten to the point to where I hire a lot of writers to write content for me. And I don't tell them, hey, it needs to be a thousand words. It needs to be right. this. I tell them, make it between 800 and 1200 words. And that way it gives them a little bit of latitude so that they don't feel like they have to um, um, filler, you know, information into yeah. the article to where the reader gets bored. And that's not what you really want at all. Yeah. And then how do you, how do you come up with topics and ideas of what to write about? So if you talk about it kind of on two sides of things, right? You have a company and your company offers a certain service. Do you just talk about the services that you offer? Do you talk about, you know, uh, the community that you work in? And then on the entrepreneur side, you know, what do you, how do you niche to a conversation or a topic to write about? Yeah. And uh, that's one of the questions a lot of people have as well is like, well, I want to do this, but I don't know what to write about. And from the business side of things, you definitely need to look at uh, the customer buying cycle. Like, where are they in their journey to hopefully buying your product? Right. Are they way at the top where they they know they have a problem and they just are now Googling surface type questions to try to answer that problem. Right. Those will be great questions for a business to, to write content on because you're now catching those people really early on. Now, maybe people have an awareness that they have the problem, but now they're looking for different ways to fix that problem. Then you would create different types of content. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I know I'm being a little general. Let's, I guess it'll be a little more specific here. So let's go back to the golf example. If I have a golf um as you can tell, I like golf. If you have a, <laughs> if you go to a, a a golf course and you're trying to create um, content on your blog, maybe will somebody be like, "Man, I really would love to uh, own a golf ball, get some golf balls." You can maybe create an uh, article on different types of golf balls. There's millions of questions that you can right. come up with that have to do with golf balls. Now, as you're creating that content, I would probably have a pop up or something come saying, "Hey, you know, if you want to get the the best golf balls here, you know, be sure to join the email list. Or if you want to know the best places to play golf, join the email list here. That way now I can market to them and say, hey, you can come play golf here, you know, something like that. So yeah. it's a nice surface level at the top. Now, once you get a little bit lower you, in that uh, customer buying cycle, someone knows that they want to play golf. They just need to know where to play golf. Mm -hmm. You would then ask a different question um, or ask a different question in terms of the content that you're creating. And it might be like, where to play golf in Pittsburgh or something like that. And that's a different type of question that would be found on that customer buying cycle. And then that one right there would lead straight to someone hopefully coming to your site, realizing, oh, there's a golf course right down the street and then let me go there. So yeah. there's tons of options that you can um, come up with. I use, I don't really use any tools. I just go to Google and use their auto suggest where oh, I type yeah. in a word and type the letter A and see what pops up. Type mm -hmm. the letter B, see what pops up. And then usually you can get, you know, tons and tons of different keyword ideas from that. Yeah. One of the other things that I suggest for my clients is uh, on the business side of things, what questions are your customers coming to you with, right? So if you keep hearing the same question over and over and over again, then that's a good indicator of a uh, topic for a blog that you can write because that's just a great resource to, you know, hey, go to my website, check out this blog. It'll answer all these questions for you. And then, you know, multiple people are, are going to benefit from it because you keep hearing that same question over and over again. Yeah. And I'll give you a ninja hack tutorial that you can use is when you come up with that question or that that problem that you want to create content on, go to Google and Google it first. Actually, open up an incognito window first and then put it in Google and see what pops up. See what other people have written about it and see if it's good. You know, see if it is actually helpful to someone who would find that article. And then if it's not helpful, if you think you can do something better, if you can be more helpful, like we were speaking about earlier, yeah. then go ahead and create that content, be more helpful. And the cream rises to the top in Google. So you will eventually um, get on that first page and start getting some, you know, highly targeted leads to your business. Yeah. Now, is there anything on the back end of a blog that's important? So like any SEO or like, titles or how how do you help optimize from the back end side of things for you know outside of just the content that you're writing is there anything that you know you need to do to optimize that side of things 
Yeah. So there's things that's called uh, SEO or search engine optimization, where you are per you are putting um, phrases or keywords in particular parts of your article, mm -hmm. so that when Google reads it, it knows what your article is about. We have to remember that as great as Google is, it's still a computer. You know, it's still an algorithm. It's not an actual person. It can't comprehend what it is that we have out there, but it can look at certain clues within our article to understand what the article is about. So, for example, um, if I was saying if I wrote an article about Springfield, Google wouldn't know if I'm talking about Springfield, Illinois, or Springfield mm -hmm. from The Simpsons, right? But if I also have in that article words such as Bart and Lisa and and Homer and Maggie and all of these words in there, then Google will understand that, okay, this article is about the Springfield that's in this fictitious show, The Simpsons, and then it'll know what audience to try to give that article to to be more helpful. So when you're creating your content, think about one keyword phrase that you would like to rank for that main question that you brought up earlier. Yeah. Make sure it's in the title of your article. Make sure it's in the first 100 words of your article as well. And then naturally throughout the rest of the article, don't kind of force it in here or force it in there and put <laughs> it in like 20 times because that'll actually get you penalized from Google mm -hmm. for what's called keyword stuffing. So once in the title tag, which is the, the main title of your article, once in the first 100 words or so of the article, and then speak naturally about the topic for the rest of the article. Usually that's good enough SEO because I think I read somewhere that 92% of websites on the internet do not even get SEO traffic. So if you can, mm. because it's not optimized correctly, right. if you do just those few things, you'll be able to get a lot of your articles ranking on Google relatively quickly if you do it well and can find keywords that the competition on Google is pretty low or it's not that great. Yeah. Now, what about linking? A lot of people talk about adding links into a blog. Is that something that will help um, enhance the blog and, and get you more exposure? Yeah, so uh, there's a couple of, um, there's a few ideologies on when it comes to linking. Um, there's two types of linking. You have internal linking and you have external linking. Internal linking is a link that goes from one page on your blog to another page on your blog or on your website. It doesn't have to just be your blog, but right. from one page on your website to another page on your website. That's an internal link. One thing you can do there is if you have a lot of links that's going to one central page, mm -hmm. then that tells Google that that must be an important page for your mm -hmm. site. And that will usually help your SEO. Yeah. Now, another way to link is external linking where you have other websites mention you and then link back to your site. So if you were walking down the street and uh, someone says, hey, do this and you'll make a million dollars, you're going to probably look at them like, okay, whatever, and then keep walking. But if you found out that that person was Warren Buffett's right-hand man, then you might be like, oh, wait, you know who you actually do know what you're talking about. Okay, I'll go ahead and do it then. <laughs> Google does something very similar. If they get a high authoritative website that will send a link to your website, that's kind of like a vouch for you that you know what you're talking about. And that actually can help your rankings as well in Google. You don't want to go out there and do this nefariously though you want to do it naturally to where people would uh, link to you just because you gave them good content or right. there's already a relationship that's there or something like that because you're going to pass what's called that link authority to your site and then you can do the same thing by uh, linking out to other websites as well mm -hmm. so links are very important you want to get those down as well but there's nothing more important than just creating good solid content that is helpful yeah. to the readers yeah I agree. Definitely. I mean, if you don't write something uh, that's that's good information, then people aren't going to read it, whether you have keywords or links in there or whatever. You got to start with the content and the topic that people are going to resonate with and benefit from for sure. Yes, exactly. You you have to be helpful first. If uh, yeah. if you're helpful first, I forgot what the maybe it was. Was it Jim Rohn? If you help enough people get what they want in life, then you're going to get what you want in life. And that's the way you have yeah. to look at it is provide the value first and then you're going to get everything, you know, if a very go giver type mentality. I love that go giver. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh it's it's a book, The Go Giver. You should oh, check yes. it out. Oh yeah, 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 that's yeah. Right. It's an amazing book. So go ahead and check it out. Um, on how uh, you just lead with value as much as possible, and it yeah. seems like, well, if I gave all this value, am I going to ever get anything? Yeah. And it seems that way. But if you do it enough, things usually come around. If yeah. you're nice to the universe, the universe will probably be nice to you. <laughs> yes, for sure. So, so one of the last uh, questions I want to talk about or topics is is affiliate marketing. 
So how do you incorporate affiliate marketing into a blog or um, become an affiliate marketer to, you know, make income um, passively or indirectly or directly? Talk about the affiliate marketing side of things. Yeah, affiliate marketing is like probably one of my favorite ways to earn an, an income in general because it's a win-win for everybody, right? You find a product that you like and, and would like to share with others. And that's really probably the most important part of it. You have to like it and you yeah. have to use it and know that it's a good product. And then if that's a good product, then you would go ahead and tell a couple of friends about it. Mm -hmm. And then those friends would then get something that they were looking for. And then you can get a commission from the sale. And then the uh, manufacturer made the sale so that they get the money as well. Um, I like to liken it to... Um, Maybe there's a pizza spot around the corner that, that you really like, and you go there all the time. And you go there so much that the owner even knows your name, right? And he says, hey, Chris, anytime you come here, I want you to, uh, or anytime you refer someone, I should say, here, and they say that, hey, Chris sent me, I'll give you 10 bucks. I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's pretty good. So you might go out and tell a few friends. You go tell five, 10 friends and make a little bit of money that way. But what if you were go able to go out there and tell a thousand friends or yeah. 10,000 friends or 100,000 friends, all of a sudden that $10 kind of really starts to ratchet up, right? And gets really crazy. So uh, affiliate marketing is the same thing. You want to find a product that you like and that you enjoy and that you're already using yeah. and that you feel comfortable recommending to somebody else. If they go through and buy it, then you are going to get a commission from that sale. So that's how affiliate marketing works. It's great because you don't have to own the product. If they actually did have a problem with the, it, the product themselves, they don't come back to me. They go back to the manufacturer and they say, hey, something's <laughs> wrong. Can I return this or yada, yada, yada. Now, if you yeah. get too many returns, then maybe you shouldn't be promoting them. But, you know, stuff happens when it comes to um, selling products. But it's a win-win for everybody. The buyer, the affiliate marketer that kind of puts themselves in the middle as the middleman and yeah. as well as the manufacturer as well. Yeah. And so you can leverage a blog to talk about that offer or that partnership uh, for the affiliate marketing side of things. Is that correct? Exactly. Because at the end of the day, you can uh, partner with as many companies as you want, but if you're not getting any eyeballs on it, then what, what difference does it make, right? And blogging is a great way to be able to get consistent leads to any business. So if you are creating content on a particular topic and you need something in order to do that particular task, then you can affiliate with that business and uh, and I say, hey, go on to go ahead and sign up for them. And uh, if you do sign up, I'll give you this free yada, 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 or whatever, right? Give them a little incentive to sign up. Yeah. And by doing so, you can get a commission on the other side. Blogging works very well because as you're creating content and it's slowly growing, more and more people are going to be finding it and then funneling through. And the more people that come through, you know, most people are looking for a, a suggestion. They know they want to do something, but they don't know which um, service or product product or whatever out there, you know, referral marketing is a good, another good word for it. Um, if they don't know what, where to go, if they Google it and they come across your page and you recommend it and you bought it and they read your review about how it changed your life, then they're probably going to end up buying it as well. And then you get the commission for it. Um, blogging is great because again, it just continues to grow and grow as you are uh, creating more content that you're putting out there. Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you for sharing all of this insight. I'm sure that, you know, all everyone listening is able to take at least one piece of the advice that you've given and implement it into an existing blog so that they can enhance it and, and improve what they're already doing or, you know, even start fresh and, you know, create a new blog um, for a startup or a company or something that they're doing to, to get that exposure and build that authority. Now, uh, Tell us, is there, uh, do you have an offer or something that you can help um, people who need a little kickstart to get started? What do you, um, how can you help everyone? Yeah, for sure. Um, if you go to bloggerevolution.com slash workshop, that's bloggerevolution.com slash workshop. And it's a, uh, I have a training there that basically shows you a couple of processes that I've kind of you know, put together over the last few years, one I like to call smart money SEO, where you're allowed, where you um, figure out how to create content that is going to draw people who are interested in your products. I talk about how to do that in that workshop as well. And from that, you can uh, just watch it and check it out. And it's really good information. I, I, I mean, I will say there is a pitch at the end, you know, but it's at the very end, but there's a lot of good uh, information there on how to get started with 
blogging, getting your website up, figuring out what topics to write about and how to be good at writing those topics so that people would want to you know, fall in love with your writing and then buy whatever it is that you have, happen to recommend. Yeah. And then if people want to continue learning from you, you have your podcast, the Blogger Evolution Podcast, where they can subscribe and, and listen to advice that you give as well um, on that side of things too, correct? Yes, 100%. Um, that's my my, uh, my my baby right now is the, the Blogger Evolution podcast. It's been fun. I've been having guests come on talking about SEO tricks and tactics that they can use to increase revenue on the site, increase traffic on the site. And uh, it's been really fun with some of the people we've had on, as well as some of the solo episodes that I have of myself where I'm just, you know, people in the audience ask me a question and I create an episode on it. You know, it's the greatest way to really create the content. So if anyone has any questions that they would like answer just let me know i might create an episode on it over at blogger evolution <laughs> well awesome well i encourage all of you guys to listen in if you're you know interested in blogging getting into blogging or learning more about blogging um chris can definitely give you some pointers and uh help you get started with uh creating that passive income from uh, a blog and and thank you chris for being a, a guest today any final words of wisdom or thoughts uh to leave us with yeah, normally I end it with um, do something now that your future self can thank you for, but you already took that from me. So <laughs> I would we can just do say, it again. okay, there you go. So do something now that your future self will thank you for. That's one of my favorite quotes because I always fear, um, I fear regret more than I fear failure. So I'd rather just give it a try and see if it works rather than always wonder, you know? And that's kind of what that quote kind of makes me think about every time I, I say it or think about it. Yes. Well, thank you again. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm so glad that I could share this information with the audience. And uh, thanks again. No problem. Thanks so much for having me on, Tori. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for listening to the Creative Visionaries podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, make sure you subscribe, leave us a review, or share with a friend. Also make sure to visit us online at creativevisionariespodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. And stay tuned for more episodes to come. And remember, it's time to tap into your true potential and unleash your inner visionary.